Goal here is to simply crack the concrete and create a structurally weak point called a hinge. Here's where the timing comes in. The inner columns are dropped first. Once they start to fall, connector beams will pull on the outer columns. Milliseconds later, the outer columns are hinged and the weight of the inside of the stadium will pull the outside of the stadium onto the field. The whole sequence will start at the pre-cut wedge and move clockwise around the stadium. Up next is the loudest, most destructive minute in demolition and you'll have an exclusive VIP seat. Well, the explosive day is finally here, and last-minute preparations are underway. Thousands have turned out to watch, but police will not let them get closer than the one square mile safety zone will allow. For many fans, the implosion will be a bittersweet goodbye. We've got a lot of memories with that building. It's depressing, but we got to move on, you know, way in the future, and uh, stadiums are history, and now we're going to have ballparks, back to the old ballparks. And, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. That's why I'm here today at 6.30 in the morning. And thanks to some amazing technology, you won't forget the vet's last moments either. As a guts and bolts extra, we've commissioned inventor and cameraman Michael Rondinelli to rig a 360-degree camera to capture the implosion from all directions inside the stadium. Using a small camera to shoot through this panoramic optic, the camera will digitally capture images of the vet imploding from every angle. It's as if you were standing on the pitcher's mound during the blast. And that moment is just about here. As the clock ticks down on Veteran Stadium, the electricity builds in the VIP area. Front and center, of course, is the Philly Fanatic, who, along with Philly legend Greg Luzinski, will be pushing the symbolic plunger. It's not connected to anything. Let me show you the real one. Okay, so it's almost go time right now, and this isn't what most people, I think, envision. They, they think of the, uh, the old detonation like that on the cartoons. This is a special box here. Yep. And uh, it's connected to just one wire? We have, heads to the uh, stadium? Yep, this one lead line ties into our nine electric detonating caps that start our whole series. Puts out 600 volts. I mean, it's plenty of juice to get everything started. What we have is a, a charge button and a fire button. Push this charge button on, and it'll juice up the capacitor. When that light comes on ready to fire, all it takes is a push from this button here. How long does it take to charge up? Uh, about 10 to 15 seconds uh -huh. at the most. Do you mind if I was the one that pressed the fire button? Uh, we can't have that happen, actually. Yeah. yeah, we have certified people who have to take care of that. Right. Well, who does the honors of actually uh, pressing the fire button? Um, Frank and uh, Nick here uh -huh. pressing the buttons. Nick, how are you feeling right now? Uh, pretty nervous. This yeah. is, uh, Two years of work culminating in, uh, well, we've got less than uh, two minutes now, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty nervous. i got major butterflies in my uh -huh. stomach right now, so. but I'm feeling good. Just hold that down, don't let go. In approximately 30 seconds, All right, Steve, we're in the red. we'll begin the countdown to the implosion of Philadelphia Veterans Stadium. of preparation have paid off. The electrical charge whips through the detonation cord, tripping each explosive along the way. At just the right time, with each support column getting either dropped or hinged as planned, 
The force of gravity and the weight of the structure itself collapses everything in sight, rotating right onto the field. Bravo! How you feeling, Nick? Oh, Looks like oh, a success, oh, man! Good job, man! What do you think, about 61 seconds? Good work, man! Look at that. Winds blow the right direction, take that dust out of here. It just seemed like it was going down in slow motion. Just being here, you can't imagine watching a structure that size collapsing. It's amazing. The sparks coming at you, the decibels, the volume of the explosions, probably in the 140s, 150s. The implosion reminds me of the fans doing the wave. Only this time, it's the vet giving fans one last wave. And yes, our 360 camera did survive the blast. Check out the results. And now all that remains is the perfect mess. What took 61 seconds to go down will take 20,000 man hours to clean up. And all that effort to make one big parking lot. I think the best part about it is as the wind takes away all the dust, you can see the new ballpark coming up right on the other side. Less than one month after the implosion next door, it's opening day here at Citizens Bank Park. Work began on the Phillies' new stadium in 2001. Almost 12,000 tons of structural steel, 52,000 cubic yards of concrete, and more than 1 million bricks went into the construction. In all, it took about 300 contractors employing over 5,000 people to put up this park. Work finished just in time for the 2004 season opener. Looking around, it sure seems worth all that effort. The Phillies today play host to the Cincinnati Reds, and even though it's a little wet, nothing can dampen the fan spirit. I have the opening game ticket from Veterans Stadium from 1971, and today's opening day here at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. Oh, it's great. I'm passing the torch. I brought my son here, Anthony III, so I went to this one. Now he's coming to this one, so hopefully you can hang them up side by side, and 30 years from now, he'll say good boy. Although history will record that the Phillies' first game here was a 4-1 loss to the Reds, the future in this beautiful ballpark is bright. As for the vet, well, they say every person gets their 15 minutes of fame, so I guess the vet should be pretty satisfied with its 61 seconds. Goodbye, Goodbye for now, I'm Tim Beggy. Join us again next time for more Guts and Bolts.